Hey, hello everyone. So how's your week going? You know, I am sorry that this is a little bit delayed this week. Um, just had a little technical difficulties yesterday. And you know, I think it's okay because the weather changed for this weekend and now it sounds like we're gonna get a lot of snow, maybe a winter weather advisory I heard. But I was gonna invite you all on Friday and Saturday nights to our live nativity. It's a drive-through experience. Well, with the weather, we're actually pushing it off a week. So if I'd been able to post this last night, you all would have shown up on Friday night and Saturday night and there would have been no one there. So next Friday and Saturday. So on December 18th and 19th, Okay, 18th and 19th. That is when we are going to have our drive through live nativity. We get to stay in your car, drive through, see the Christmas story, and then you can park, come up and see the live nativity with all the fun animals, have a cookie, or maybe two, and then get on a hay rack and ride and sing carols. So next Friday and Saturday, December 18th and 19th, from 6.30 to 8.30 at night. Can't wait to see you all there. So, this week, I don't know about you, but last yesterday and then today on Thursday, it is gorgeous outside. So, I know I'm going to spend some time outside doing some things to get ready for the snow. I hope you have some chance to do that as well. So, that's fun. It is. It's a great day. And you know what? Outside, it's a great day to be outside even if we can't always have our friends with us because we're trying to stay safe, it's still a good day to play outside. The, you know, speaking of friends, when we are able to get together, isn't it nice to have that group? Do you have a group of friends that you just like to hang out with? You're kind of your best friends, that group that you always just kind of go with. Well, today, we're gonna hear about some of Jesus's best friends. Because you see, when Jesus began his ministry, there were a lot of people that followed him. And there are a lot of people that learn from his teachings. Well, in today's story, we're going to see how Jesus chose 12, 12 of his best friends to be his disciples. Now, what's a disciple, you ask? That's a very good question. You see, a disciple means a learner or a student. And you know, when we follow Jesus, we become students of his, we become his followers, he leads us, and he teaches us, we become his disciples. And when we do that, you know, we have a good, solid, strong path that we get to walk on. That's what happens when we follow Jesus. Well, what happens when we don't follow Jesus, when we decide to follow something else or someone else? Well, I was thinking about that, and you know what? It reminded me of a time when I was growing up. You see, we lived out in the country, and my cousins lived right next to us, so we played outside all the time, especially in really nice days. Well, next to our house, there was a forest that had a valley in it. Now, mom and dad always said, don't go playing in the valley. Well, my cousin came, and she's like, hey, Sam, I saw this really cool thing down by the little creek that runs through the valley. You wanna come down and see? And I said, sure thing, let's go. So we go down there, you know, not paying attention to what I was told or what I was told to do. And I went down there and I followed her instead of, you know, following my parents like I, I should. And we get down there and I stepped in the mud. Not too bad you'd think. But it was that mud, you know, from springtime when it's really muddy and it just sucks your um, shoe down. Yeah, it did that and it kept my shoe. Cut, my, my foot came out, no shoe. So I walked back without a shoe, which was fun. Almost as fun as having to explain to my parents why I didn't have a shoe and I needed new ones. So I learned a lesson to make sure that when I'm following someone, that they know what they're doing and they know where they're going. And you know what? When we follow Jesus, he knows what he's doing and he knows where we're going. And he's going to keep us on a solid path so that we don't have the 
mud suck us down. And that is a really, really nice thing because I don't like being sucked in the mud. I don't know about you. Well, so that's today's story. That's today's story that we're going to share with you about a time when Jesus called a group of people to follow him, just like we're called to follow him. So let's see what happened then. So first, I think it's a good idea to come back and look at our big picture question in mind and answer and have that in mind when we start to ask ourselves, why are these people following Jesus? Why do we follow Jesus? So our question is, why did Jesus become human? Well, Jesus became human to obey his father's plan to rescue sinners like us. And each time we hear a story about Jesus and wonder, why did he do that? This is what we need to remember. He did what he did because he was obeying his father's plan. Everything that Jesus did on earth was according to God's plan, his perfect plan, and how he decided to rescue sinners like us. And isn't that fun? And isn't that cool? And it's really awesome to have that in mind and to understand that. So whenever we ask ourselves our question, why did Jesus do what he did? Because he was obeying his father. He was obeying God and God's perfect plan. So he's obeying God's plan. So let's look back and think. When Jesus, you know, became an adult and came onto the scene and started his ministry, what did he do? Well, first, remember, we talked about it. He went to John the Baptist to be baptized. Why? Because Jesus was obeying God by being baptized. And then Jesus went out into the wilderness. And what happened? That's right. The devil tried to tempt him trying to make bread, trying to call down the angels to rescue him. But Jesus was tempted to do those things, but he never did because that wasn't what God wanted him to do. And as we've talked about, Jesus perfectly followed God's perfect plan because Jesus never sinned. And then John's followers started asking questions about Jesus. Who is he? What's he doing? Why is he here? Well, what did John do? He started to point people towards Jesus, just like our verse, and we'll get to it in a little bit. John knew that Jesus was the important part, that John needed to decrease himself so that Jesus could increase. Because John pointed people and said, you need to follow Jesus, not me. Today's story, we're going to look at that special group of people Jesus called to follow him, the 12 disciples. So let's watch and see our Bible story for this week. Jesus' ministry had begun. He traveled around preaching about God and telling people to turn away from their sins. People started talking about Jesus and the things he was teaching. They were interested in what Jesus had to say. Large crowds followed Jesus around and listened to him teach. One day, Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew. Peter and Andrew were fishermen. Jesus called out to them, Follow me, and I will teach you to fish for people. Right away, Peter and Andrew dropped their nets and followed Jesus. Later, he saw two more brothers. Their names were James and John. They were in a boat, fixing nets with their father, Zebedee. Jesus called out to them, and right away they got up, left their father and the boat, and followed Jesus. Jesus went on and saw a man named Matthew, who was also called Levi. Matthew was sitting at the tax office. 
Matthew was a tax collector. Many people didn't like tax collectors because tax collectors were unfair. Jesus called out to him, follow me. So Matthew got up, left everything behind and followed Jesus. Matthew had a big feast for Jesus at his house. Many tax collectors and sinners came to eat with Jesus and his disciples. The religious leaders saw this and they didn't think Jesus should be friends with people who did wrong things. They complained to the disciples, why does your teacher eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard the religious leaders and said, people who are healthy don't need a doctor, but people who are sick do. I did not come to invite good people. I came to invite sinners to turn back to God. Later, Jesus gathered his followers together and chose 12 of them to be his disciples. Jesus' apostles would work closely with Jesus and would go out to tell others about him. These are the men Jesus chose. Simon, who was called Peter, Simon's brother, Andrew, James and John, who were called the Sons of Thunder, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James and the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot. Jesus came to earth to show what God is like and to save people from their sins. This is great news. Jesus told his disciples to tell others about him, and we are Jesus' disciples when we trust in him. Everyone in the world needs to hear the good news about Jesus. That's cool. And it's true. Everyone in the world needs to hear about Jesus. But did you notice something? The disciples were busy when Jesus showed up. You know, they were fishing, being tax collectors. They were busy doing their stuff, being who they were and living their lives. Jesus called the disciples to him. Did you see what they did? What happened? They immediately left and stopped what they were doing so that they could follow him. They didn't say, we'll follow you. Just let us finish this up here and we'll be right there or let me finish working through the end of the day or the end of the month, and then I'll follow you. What did they do? They picked up everything, left what they were doing, and followed him. Didn't ask, how are we gonna eat or what are we gonna do? Just trusted Jesus, just like we need to trust him. Because you know, in those days, only the best students approached teachers and asked to follow them. The students watched very carefully. They had to be very hard workers. And the teacher had to think that, hey, they're pretty special too in order to say, sure, I'll teach you, come on. Well, when Jesus chose his followers, he chose a group of people that no one probably would have thought of to choose. No one really probably thought that they were very smart enough to be students. But Jesus knew who they were. Jesus' followers were his disciples. He chose some fishermen, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, a tax collector named Matthew, who no one wanted to have around. The other men that he chose, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, James, Thaddeus, Simon and Judas, and yes, two of Jesus's disciples were named James. But then I'm sure you can think of in your class that you've probably had classes before where you've had two people with the same name. You can still tell each other apart, you know who you are. But Jesus's disciples would learn from Jesus so that they could tell others the good news about why Jesus came to save them from their sins. See, because Jesus came to earth to show what God is like and to save people from their sins is great news, awesome news. And Jesus told his disciples to tell 
everyone about him. And you know what? We are Jesus' disciples as well when we trust in him. And we should be telling everyone that we see the good news about Jesus. Because you know what? God has a plan for us too. We have a part of his plan. And have you ever wondered about what God's plan is for you? How maybe it can be hard sometimes to understand or trust what God has for you? I bet there's a good question in that. In fact, let's see if Pastor Brian has a question and answer about trusting God's plan for you. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Anna Lee from Clinton, Mississippi asks, How do we know if we are going to like God's plan? All right, Anna, you might not like my answer because my answer might not be what you would expect. You are probably sitting there thinking, all right, Pastor Brian's gonna give us this great explanation about how we're always gonna like God's plan and, and it'll be really warm and fuzzy. Well, that's not the answer I can give. The answer I need to give is we don't know if we're always gonna like God's plan because God's plan sometimes includes for us to go through suffering and hard things. We, we know this is true because think about God's plan for Jesus, his own son. God's plan for Jesus was that Jesus would suffer and die for the sins of the world. And so if God would have his own son go through that plan of difficulty and hardship, why, why do we think God would spare us from hard things? We're not promised that. And so while there are some times where God's plan for us is very pleasant, and we, man, appreciate that, there are times that God's plan for us includes difficult things, and we're just not going to like it. But here's the key. It's not about what we like. It's about what we trust, and it's about who we trust. You see, whatever God's plan is for us, we need to learn to trust that God is at work no matter what for His glory and our good that God will be glorified through anything and that we can find that it is for our good as well, even if we don't see it on this earth. Now, one day in heaven, I believe we're going to look back and, and God will show us why we went through what we went through. And we're going to say, oh, now it makes sense. But that may not happen on earth. And so the key for us, again, is, is not necessarily to want to like God's plan, but to want to trust his plan no matter what. That's what faith is all about. So I've got a question back for you. Is it easy or hard for you to trust God's plan for you and why? You know, that is a very good question. And it's something that you could write about in your journal. And to put down there in that journal page, is it easy or hard to trust God's plan for you? And you know what? Some days it's okay to have both answers because it's not the same day for day. But what is the same is Jesus. And our question, how can we do more to trust Jesus today than yesterday? Because even when it's hard, he can help us to trust him. So that is what we need to make sure that we are concentrating on, is trusting Jesus and asking his help to trust him. Because sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's difficult, and we need help. And in those times, it's also okay to go and tell mom and dad or someone else that, hey, I'm having a hard time today trusting. Can you help me? And let's talk about it. And that is okay because it is through our trust that we are able to go and tell people about him so that more people know and more people understand. And you know what also takes trust? Being a missionary. It does. So in your book that we sent you, you should have a flyer, part of it, that has in for more information on the missionaries that we're talking about. Remember the aviation people? They fly the plane in to places where you just can't walk or it's really hard to drive. They keep the planes up to date. They keep them safe so that people can fly in supplies, Bibles, and everything else. Well, sometimes 
you know, sitting here at home, it's hard to say, how can I help them over there? They're so far away. How can I help them? Well, there's a paper in there that says, how can kids help? And there's supplies. There's a link to where you can help them purchase supplies or help maintain their plane. But the third step, it's probably the most important one because it's the one we can do anywhere. Whether we have money or time, whether we're at home, in the car, playing outside, it's specific ways that we can pray for them. Prayer for them, for their equipment, for the people that they're helping, for their kids. Because yeah, they have kids themselves over there that are running around these places, these countries that maybe not don't have everything that we take for granted over here. Our prayers for missionaries are very important. And it's important to remember that when we pray and that wherever we go, that we can be on mission as well. We can be out there spreading the news of Jesus. Jesus called his disciples to follow him. We're Jesus' disciples when we trust in him. And everyone in the world needs to hear the good news about Jesus. So, as his disciples, we are told to go out and tell people about him. So, let's make sure that that's what we're doing. You know, and that fits right into our key verse for this unit. John 3.30, he must increase, but I must decrease. It's exactly what John was telling the people when they were asking about Jesus. John knew that he had to decrease because it wasn't all about him. It was about Jesus. So we ask ourselves, what if we don't decrease in order to increase Jesus's fame and worth? Is it optional? Do only certain Christians have to decrease and understand and point the way towards Jesus? No, it's the path of all of God's people. Everyone who is following Jesus needs to point other people to Jesus. Following Jesus can be hard. As we love people and they come to know Jesus, they may be tempted to follow us instead of Jesus. Just like the people who are trying to say, hey, John, we can follow you. You're the one who told us about him, so we can just follow you. But our key passage here shows that we need to be humble. We need to realize that it's not about us. And just like John realized that, and just like John pointed everyone to Jesus and pointed away from himself, we need to do that. We need to point away from ourselves and to Jesus because we can't answer life's problems. Only Jesus can do that. So that's why we need to point people towards Jesus and away from us. So those are some really big things to think about this week. And they're really important to remember that it's about Jesus and that we are his disciples when we trust in him. He's called us. He said, hey, come and follow me. And we can. And that's really cool and really fun. So let's pray. God, thank you for sending Jesus to save us from our sins. We pray that you work in our hearts to let us know you better and we work and you work in the hearts of those who don't know you so that they can repent and become followers of Jesus as well. They learn how to trust him and obey him and tell others about him. We want to be faithful followers and we know we need your help. So we just ask that you help us to be good followers of you, help us to trust you, and help us to share you with others. In your name, amen. Okay, guys, have a great week. Enjoy today because it sounds like this weekend it may get a little cold and blustery. And next weekend, next Friday and Saturday, December 18th and 19th, I want to see you guys out at the church, out at First Free from 6.30 to 8.30 at night for our drive through nativity, park, see the live nativity, see the cool animals, eat a cookie or two, and then go on on the hay rack ride and sing some carols. It is going to be a great time. I look to see you all there. 
Otherwise, have a blessed week, and I will talk to you next week. Bye.